ID tech. This is it right here. I went here three times. Yeah, this is exactly how it was. No, this is one of the other rooms. I don't even think this was that. No, this might have been a different college, but like this is exactly how it was. Like literally exactly like this. The same covers on the tables and everything. It's so on point. And I love these computers, dude. Yeah, there's Minecraft stuff that you can do. Which is like basically, I mean, I did Java the first time I went. I went, the first time I had, um, Blue Jean Randy, that was my, that was my, um, counselor. Or my instructor, whatever, I don't, I don't know what you'd call it there, I think counselor. Um, I was like, we were upstairs in like the quieter areas, uh, with like the cleaner rooms. And they had like less computers, they were like, the these are the smaller rooms that I was in. Um, and I think it's like for the younger camps, that's just, that's just what you get. There was like four rows of computers like this. Uh, it was, it was like, there was a row on the side that we were at and then there's another row. We were like a row. I was like, I would be sitting like right here. Like this would be my seat. And then like Blue Jean Randy would like sit right here occasionally. And there'd be rows like this and there'd be people sitting on this side and all that. And uh, there were larger rooms downstairs, but uh, those were for like, I think like some of the older kids, but like these upstairs rooms, there were like, I don't know, like six of these rooms or so combined. Um, and then there was like an area where there was like an open higher ceiling where like all the different uh, uh, people in all the courses can interact. Um, but we didn't usually go there. We, for the vast majority of the time, we were just in our room until like I did the overnight camps. Then we were in the downstairs areas, which that's my, that, no, 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 because even people who were with us in those overnight camps, some of them were doing just day camps. But yeah, I didn't really learn much about programming. I, I mostly learned about like video games and like Steam and Valve and all that. We finished Portal um, and Portal 2. Uh, we played a lot of Mafia. Um, I got really, I learned how to be like, I learned a lot of advanced mafia tactics. Um, I learned how to use the command prompt to control things on the computer. Uh, what else? What else? I learned a bit more about, I already knew how to set up websites, but I learned a bit more about that and like how like um, web apps and then like JavaScript works. Uh, but mostly I just learned like <clears throat> random things here and there from like the other kids who were with me about like games we were playing and stuff. It was pretty fun. I had a good time. I learned a lot about gaming PCs and how to build one. Um, and like these RGB backlit keyboards are like, um, that was like the first time I'd ever seen anything like that cool with, with like these keyboard, with the keyboard stuff. Um, what else? I learned what ping was and uh, latency um, and IPS screens. I learned what IPS screen. I believe I learned what IPS screens was the first time I went to, it was like 2014 or something, the first time I went. Um, what else, what else, what else? I don't know, it's kind of hard to remember. It, I mean, it's not hard to, it's it, very vivid memories, honestly, but it was a while back. I had a decent time though. There really wasn't much to it. And, and I'm saying all this because like all the fun things I did that I'm not mentioning is because the second time I went, I did all of this stuff that, I, that was fun, but way more. Um, and the third time I went, it was even more than that. The first time I went, I was just a daytime participant. The second time I went, I made the right choice and I stayed overnight. Now I got some roommate, I forgot who it was, but I remember seeing like, two to three people from from the first camp. So I talked to them for a bit while I was there, but um, none of them were in my class this time. I had a, the second time I had a handyman, or as we called him, handies short for hand jobs. We were, this was like, we were such stupid little kids, bro. We were literally, no, this was 2015. This was 2015. And the third time I went was 2016. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Um, 
but yeah, <laughs> fifteen year old kids, and we gave this we gave this guy his nickname as Handies. But yeah, it was a it was a Emory University. The same I mentioned in um I'll leave that link in the description. Let me let me add that as a note. Um, so when I talked about Camp Mosaic, um, I did mention that. Uh, I would also interact with like people of a different camp because I'd already been to that camp. This was that camp. This was it right here. And I saw like a uh, handyman like later on. I even uh, Ali, my cousin Ali went to ID Tech uh, uh, the next year, and I uh, drove over there to like see him because it's in Atlanta. And so, and he lives in Alabama, so I'm like, hey, let me come through, check it out. And I went to his like uh, graduation ceremony from the place, basically. But yeah, it was we we see these people put, and I saw the same counselors then, at that time too, but they had a different building, um, but it was all in like the dorms of Emory. Like you could you could find them walking around and stuff, and there was an area, there was a couple like shared areas like the uh, the Emory cafeteria was was used for for quite a bit of. Uh, for both camps or around that area. And, uh, Mosaic did not use the cafeteria, but Mosaic used areas around it. So yeah, this was um the second time I went. The second time I went was amazing, dude. It was amazing. First of all, right as camp started, that game like Agario blew up. So in our giant room, like all the older kids uh who were like in the back would like see all the little kids in the front doing like all the minecraft and roblox stuff and all these little kids were like playing agario they were all addicted to it so this time is when i i knew what i was doing i had found my bearings and i got to experience all that fun stuff so my dorm was pretty big and uh my roommate and i had a, a like closet and a desk and like two twin beds um and they were like both bunk beds like the they were both high off the ground and there was space underneath them, but there were no beds underneath them. And uh, everything was in like, was in good shape. Decently sized room. But yeah, that was like the best. I'm so surprised that we even got those rooms. Like the every other time I've ever had anything to do at Emory, it's always been the most garbage rooms. That was definitely the best one. We had like those chairs where like you can lean back and it feels like you're falling, but it, you won't actually fall back into it. It'll like stop it or whatever. They had like stoppers on the back. It was so cool. I love those chairs. Um, I think I use them way too frequently and I, I stopped being afraid of falling back into them. And because of that, I've fallen back in quite a few chairs. Like I stopped having a fear of falling back in chairs and it's it screwed me over in the future and it's still affecting me in the present, but it was fun nonetheless. But yeah, um, we came so close. Actually, I still didn't have my bearings yet because we were doing some risky things, but we were not going all the way. Like we were this close to going out and like sneaking into the girls' dorms and things like that. Um, at one point we actually left campus just to, like we went to Chipotle and then we went to CVS and we like stocked up on like Takis and like that, the Jug chocolate thing and like Airheads, Jolly Ranchers, all of that. It was just a good time, bro. It was just a nonstop good time, like learning little bits of programming here and there logging into someone else's Steam who was on the computer before me, playing TF2 on the LAN party with everyone, picking Engineer and making them rage. I, 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 honestly, I'm such a supportive person. Like, you can tell a lot about a person by the kind of class they pick in TF2. My, my two favorite classes in TF2 are Engineer and, uh, and Medic. Those are my two favorite classes. Engineer is really fun, but Medic I'm really good at. So, yeah, it was, and also finding like hacked TF2 servers. There was this one server where it was like, it was like payload, where each team like got their own payload and it was like a 3v3 or something. I can't remember exactly how it was, but then like they would both push their payload to like the center of the map and like an elevator would like take it up. And once it exploded, there would be like a 1v1 on some like volcano looking area. And the map was not part of like the vanilla game or whatever. It was... It was like in a forced like third person point of view. It was so weird with like all this like lava and these rocks around. You'd face off in like a 1v1. We did this so many times. It was so fun like playing this land party. The lights are off. That whole like 
dude, that vibe, like, I could totally see why all these, like, programming houses and all this stuff, like, exist. Because, like, these, like, gaming houses where the lights are off and all you see are these, like, bright lights on everyone's monitors and everyone's, like, losing their minds on this, like, crazy land party. That vibe, that aesthetic, you don't know it unless you've been a part of it. You really don't know it. And they got, like, music blasting that, like, oh, man, so much music. I listen to so much Migos, so much, like, uh, there was, like, some new Kid Ink stuff. Uh, there was that, like, Meek Mill album that dropped, um, the one that had, like, Rico on it, the red background with, like, the $100 bill, um, what's it called, Dream, something, I don't know, Meek Mill has, like, a lot of albums that are, like, very similarly named, I haven't checked it in a while, but, um, we were bumping that shit, dude, we had a good time playing, like, games outside, I ate bacon for the first time while I was there, actually, well, pork bacon, at least. I'd already had turkey bacon, but that's not, that's not even real bacon. But man, we had some amazing conversations. Like, I learned how to be a good medic in TF2, so I'm a good supporter of my friends. Um, and, and during those conversations, like, everyone loved me, and they're like, hey, hey. I, uh, everybody raged on each other, except for me. Except for when I was playing NG. Then they raged. But I played TF2 a good amount and every time we played TFT we never like took a we never try hards and we would just relax and just have good conversations in fact in that game mode where it was the payload it didn't even matter who pushed their payload to the end because everybody would end up in that like 1v1 situation at the end it didn't matter who pushed their payload but we'd still just play we would be like basically brainless playing these games and we would just have deep conversations it was so fun dude and like even the counselors were like, either they were getting in on it or they were tired and they'd go to sleep, basically. And uh, it would just be up to the participants to talk about whatever they wanted to talk about. And like, yeah, we were kids, we were 15 years old, but hey, 15 year olds can have some pretty deep conversations. Man, this one, it's a bit, diff it's a bit more difficult to remember because I have a lot of vivid memories from the first one, but not so many vivid memories from the second. Oh, wait, my YouTube channel was starting to pop off on this one. Or at least the first time it was, uh, and I was finding all like all kind of new music to like put in my videos. Uh, I made like YTPs. I made that one video of like a uh, the YTP of the Super Hot Fire stuff, and I was showing it to people. They were like, "Hey, look! I just uploaded it before I came here." I got so lucky with that because it was rendering for like two hours on my laptop, and I didn't bring anything. I didn't bring my laptop or anything to ID Tech, and my dad was like, "Dude, you gotta get a faster computer. Like this is." Like you're, you're delaying, like we got to drop you off to this ID tech place and you're sitting here trying to render your video upload to YouTube. I got so lucky with the upload because I uploaded to YouTube like publicly, started uploading the moment I left and then um, just locked my computer. And by the time I got to ID tech, it was uploaded. And I'm like, I could show people. I really wanted to show them that video. I got so lucky with that one, really cutting it close. And then when I got there, I was showing it to them. That was the best icebreaker really is showing each other our YouTube videos. That was really the best icebreaker. But we did a lot of other icebreakers and stuff. And we were like, we were such cringe kids. Like, I felt so cool. But looking back on it, we were all like, oh, PC Master Race, PC Master Race. It was so stupid. <laughs> those dudes are awesome though. I miss those guys, man. Those are my people. Like, remember when Mrs. Puff was like, these are my people. That's the same way I felt, bro. That's the same way I felt. Those people, like, they ranged from, from, like, the Linus Tech Tips to the Boogie 2988s to the T Martins, and I had fun with all of them. There wasn't a single person there who I didn't, who I didn't like. Also, Filthy Frank was getting pretty big at the time, too. Everyone there watched him. Ah, oh, okay, I should... This is so stupid. I, I, I never like to save photos on my phone. It's such a shame. I just... I would, I would take photos, I'd upload them on the internet, and then I would like delete them later. If you guys find um, any pics from like ID Tech from like, from Emory, ID Tech, Java, 2014, 15, 16, or 16, uh, I mean, not Java, just, if you find any ID Tech like footage or pictures from those years, then, uh, then yeah, chances are I could be in them, maybe. I'll, I'll let me, let me message my homies real quick to send send me some stuff because they might have some um 
They might have some footage. Hold up. I only went to eye detect with Nick and Nair. So N Nair had already went. Um, I told him about it the first time I went. He went the second time, but on a different week. And uh, he went the week right after me, I believe. And um, the third time I went, like, this is... This camp... So, yeah. I, I, I sit down, grab some popcorn. This one's a bit of a long story, okay? The third and final time I went to ID Tech, we were taking the Unreal Engine course uh, for Unreal Engine 4. This is, you know, Unreal Engine 5 just came out, so. And our counselor was named Voxel. Um, I mean, like, that was her nickname. That wasn't her actual name. That would be cool, though. Oh, that's such a cool name. Yo, that's actually such a cool name. I was thinking about writing that down just now, but I'm like, no, nah, I'm probably not even going to have kids. But dude, name your kid Voxel. That's such a cool name, bro. That's so cool. That's so cool. There was Voxel. Uh, there was Handyman, obviously, who remembered me from the last year. Uh, there was the other girl named Woodstock, who was like crazy hot. There's plenty of other plenty of other dudes. There was one dude who looked like Cinnamon Toast Ken um, and stuff like that. I don't remember his name, though. Uh, damn, I'm trying to... No, nah, there's no way I can remember. We did make a list. Cause like they make a point of like everybody has nicknames and like people are trying to like figure out everybody's like real names sometimes they'll like they'll uh, uh let it out or whatever uh, or sometimes you'll figure it out somehow but um damn i'm waiting for him to send me some pictures but yeah we did we literally made a list like whenever we figure out somebody's name we put it on our notes okay this is this person's real name actually when i look back at it woodstock wasn't even that hot it just, for, from the perspective of a 16-year-old teenage boy who, who, like, everybody there's a gamer, by the way. So if you're a girl, you're a gamer girl, so that automatically bumps you up. Well, not so much anymore, but, you know. Back then, it was like, I distinctly remember this 20-year-old girl, like, just, Wait, maybe Woodstock was in Camp 2. No, she was in Camp 3. She was... No. That eh, doesn't even matter. You get the point. There were a couple good-looking girls in each camp I went. And also the director of the camp. This is the third one. The director was DC. Um, who was this, like, large black woman. And that's the perfect person to be the director for that year in particular. I'll explain why later. So, um, they changed their dorms again like we got separate dorms every single time we went there but they changed their dorms um and this one time it was complete trash like nick's room oh my fucking god man like me and nara were sharing a bunk bed obviously i get top bunk like always um that's just how it was like growing up with for us younger sibling i get the top bunk <clears throat> he always got the bottom bunk um so in this scenario too it doesn't matter what scenario I'm in. I'm always top bunk, okay? Um, I'm a younger sibling at heart. I'm always player two at heart. So the rooms were small, shocker, but Nick got his own room with no roommates. And we were jealous when we heard that. We we're like, hey, what the hell? How come he gets his own room? But then we went there to see like the uh, luxury, lavish, I was deciding which word to say first, life that he's going to be living for the next week. We open the door. It legit looks like a shower in a concentration camp. Like his bed is under like this giant slope that you'd hit your head on if you sat up. There was like a random like hole in the wall. Uh, like not like a, it was a, like a broken hole in the wall. This shit was like, I'm, I'm so confused. It was like, he didn't even get like a full bed. It was like a cot thing that he got. There was a, there was, damn, he had like nothing in that room. There was no desk. There was a mirror. Um, it was a full body mirror, but it was broken. It was like shattered. And like, there were still pieces on the ground. So I don't even know if this was a dorm or not. I think this might've been like some attic thing or something like that. Honestly, this might've been some storage room or something. This probably wasn't even a dorm. But yeah, it was, uh, there were hella spider webs too. Once we saw that, we just noped out of there. Nick slept in our room. Uh, the first day it was just us three, but literally by the third day of camp, it was like 10 other people all sleeping in our room together. 
two people on each bunk bed. I believe it was actually two. One person slept with me on the top bunk. Another, two people slept on the bottom bunk, and then everybody else was like sleeping on the ground, like on some gay shit. Um, actually, it wasn't even on some gay shit. We had a blanket between us, uh, but I had the safe side closer to the wall, um, and he was he was cool with it. I'm I'm thankful for that. I I really appreciate when people are like courteous, like, hey, it's your bed, you get the safe side, you know. And we were sleeping sardine style, so uh, oh. I should, sardine style is a thing that we invented, by the way. Like, the name, the name, the name. Like, a lot of people sleep like this, but, like, um, I don't think most people know the terminology. So, sardine style is when somebody, it, it, like, you're sleeping next to somebody, but their feet are next to your head, and your feet are next to their head. Uh, like, you guys alternate like that, right? It's to prevent, like, um, like, well, it's, it's like a, it's like a, uh, non-verbal way of saying no homo basically but then there's also like immigrant style which it never got to but immigrant style is literally just like piled up on top of each other um like you know how you would be in the trunk of a car uh damn let me let me see let me see i know i have some pictures oh this is this is a picture this is a picture of me we're like laughing this is a picture of the dude who was like sleeping on the top bunk with me. He's his legs would be right here, my head would be right here. I got the I got the safe side, and he'd be laying like this. Those are my headphones. Um, what the hell is this? Such a mess of a room, dude. A door is literally right here. Such a small room. This is like our closet. Um, but yeah, this is like sardine style of sleeping. Let's see what else do I have. Oh, I got this. I don't know. I don't think I took this picture, but um, yeah, that's Nair. And I forgot who everyone else was. Oh, this laptop, bro. I remember this laptop. You had it for so iconic, truly an iconic laptop, bro. No, but this was like the second night. So we had some more people here. Um, but dude, the third night and every night after that was just stupid, ridiculous. But yeah, it never, it never got to like the immigrant style of sleeping. Um, and, and in immigrant style, it's typically, like, your faces are all, like, right next to each other, usually. But that's, like, a last resort. And we had plenty of space in that room. If it ever got to that, we'd probably just use two rooms. Or we'd probably go to somebody else's room because other people had bigger rooms than us. But um, we were, like, the cool guys, you know. We were good at Brawlhalla. And that became, the, like, the main game of ID Tech that year. Or that, that week, I guess. Um, but we, like, we, we bought speakers with blast music. Um, we watched movies. Like, uh, that was where I first watched Who Killed Captain Alex for the first time. And, uh, what's funny is, actually, no, wait, that guy, uh, I believe it was this guy. Who was, uh, his name was Alex, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he, he was like, uh, he was into furries, I believe. Or no, he wasn't. We just made fun of him. I, I don't know why we assigned that value to his thing. But the dude who slept up top with me was, um, there was Leafy. That that was him. Well, like, the, uh, Leafy was blowing up at the time. Um, or actually, this is before Leafy even blew up, and I told them about it because I'd been watching Leafy since, like, 80k subs. Um, but he looked just like Leafy, and I showed it to them, and he became, like, we just called him Leafy from that day. I think this kid's name was Matthew. If I'm not mistaken. No, no, no. There was a kid named Matthew, but he didn't sleep in our room. Um, he was like one of the only kids that didn't. There was another Brazilian kid uh, also who slept in our room. Um, and there we did put like other stuff like, uh, what's it called? Blankets and like mattresses and stuff like that on the floor so that like everybody was a bit more comfortable. So on the first day, on the first day of uh, camp, we did like our icebreakers and everybody's together and then we split off into our groups and our instructor voxel um actually on the on the second day on the first day we got there at like uh six or seven and then we like slept and woke up um and like we did like a bunch of um different sort of like that rock paper scissors thing and all that um but on the second day we didn't have our instructor on the first day Everybody, all the other people, but, like, Voxel was, like, late. She had, like, something to do. But, um, 
and, and some partic some of the participants are also only day camp participants, um, and some of the participants are overnight like campers. But what also what happened was is Voxel was a day camp counselor, which is like that's kind of weird. She was the only one that did that. She was the first time I'd ever seen that and the last time as well. So she left every night to like go back home or whatever. And then she came back to campus uh, like an, about an hour after we all woke up. Uh, so, and, and dude, she was like swole. Oh my God. Yeah, I remember. She was swole as hell. She was 19 years old. She did powerlifting. Like I used to think like, oh, she's so much older than us. She does power. I used to think I was normal. I look back on it. She was a 19-year-old girl. She knew how to code like C++. Like she did powerlifting. She was with the shit. She was so cool. I wish I could still be friends with her. I wish I could still be friends with her. She's so cool. And she did some other sports too, but I remember her telling us she did powerlifting. But that's so cool. And she was pretty damn big for a girl. She was bigger, bigger than all of the guys that were, well, not all the uh, counselors. She was bigger than all of us, which like, yeah, she was 19 and we were 16, but like still, that typically doesn't happen. Like when I was 16, I was bigger than like the fully grown, fully matured, uh, you know, like soccer player girls, like all like girls who were in like college, like I could beat them in their own sports and things like that, you know, when I was 16. But like, damn, she was, I don't know, maybe it was just because of the hierarchy, but that's what I view her as. I view, she probably was actually shorter than me now that I think about it. But I didn't view her as such. I view her as like three feet taller than me because she was always standing and I was always sitting. It's weird how like your your memory is so shaped by experience and feeling rather than like a picture perfect representation of what happened. But yeah, um, let's see, let's see. Uh, I remember there was a girl named Kodak. Maybe I was like, dude, I don't know. Like, you know, Kodak, like the camera, like Kodak Black, the film, whatever. Uh, I said that was backwards. But yeah, during camp, we were also bumping hella Kodak. I, at the time, Institution, I believe. Uh, no, no, no. It was, it was the thing right before Institution. Project Baby, right? That's what had come out. So we were like, hey, let's, we got to fucking bump this shit. Because we got Kodak here at camp. I don't, she did not know about Kodak Black, but we knew. Um, what else? What else? Yeah, I, I, I don't remember any of the other counters' names. Uh, how the hell do I remember Kodak? I remember she taught the, uh, she taught Minecraft um, to the little kids. And she also taught video editing and video production. So, like, when we were... Um, in our group, like, we'd be doing game design, like, right behind us, there were the kids who were doing, like, game design with Unity, and that was, like, actually a perfect setup for a heated rivalry, and then there were the other kids, like, across the whole room, we were in, like, a huge area downstairs, but there were these other kids who were doing, like, video stuff, and, like, they, they thought they were doing such cool stuff, they'd hop on there, and they'd be like, hey, check out what I learned in Final Cut, and I'd be like, oh, really? Final Cut? Pathetic. I could do this in Final Cut, hit film, Sony Vegas, fucking Filmora, Wondershare, like I could do this and all this shit. And I would show them like the videos I was making on YouTube and they'd be blown away. Like I remember blowing them away, away with like YTPs them. Actually, I literally show one. This is this was the video that like shocked them that I could do this. Cause I made this in Final Cut and I did this in a day. It was um, because like you could see the name. Yeah. Bro, this is a straight 2016 humor. This is 2016. What up? I gotta turn the volume down. Moss always points to civilization. Flat way. That way there. We. I don't know why I was so obsessed with yep. your rape. Well, then I'm going that way.
song. What's that? Yeah. Oh, looks good, huh? <laughs> Supposed to so eat this pizza without my drink. <laughs> I ain't paying for that. Well, this one's on the. <laughs> I use the same assets over and over again throughout the entire video. But yeah, that was my that was my video I showed it to them. And these guys, these like these like twelve year old kids who were doing video editing were like they were like, Oh my god, how did you do that? How did you do this? It was so cool, it was so fun to like show off to them. That's how I knew about Kodak, because like Kodak was the one who was their counselor. But yeah, uh Handyman was in the same room as us. But he was teaching like a bunch of other people. Um, he, he taught Java, he taught Java, uh, uh, damn, what the hell was the Brazilian kid's name? I'm not even sure, honestly. There was, uh, the guy on the right of me, I remember his name was Connor, and he played Orion in Brawlhalla. So we, I just called him Orion, because I, I, I didn't remember his name like that. But, damn, I really can't remember anyone else. It's so, oh, sh dude, it's, the nicknames you get in, in ID Tech are like, I remember the second time I went there, this dude, um, the second, like in 2015, I went to ID Tech, this, uh, like we'd be logging into Steam accounts that weren't ours because like uh, other people would use the computers and stuff like that. Like while we were gone, they'd log into their Steams and then we'd log back in ours. And so eventually, we just stayed logged into theirs, and we would just play on land servers, because it didn't really matter. We weren't playing competitive or anything like that. I remember the dude to the left of me, he was, like, a year younger than me, and he would, like, kind of, like, look up to me. And, um, he, the guy, like, I don't, I don't remember what his name was, but on Steam, the name that he played with was Kito, K-I-T-O, um, and... Uh, what's it called? It was like somebody else's Steam account. It wasn't even his. But whenever he would log in, everybody would see it and they'd be like, Hey, Keto, what the... Stop sniping me or whatever, right? That's what they'd say because that's all they'd see on uh, TF2. And so everyone started calling him that. And that became his nickname. He started being... Go he started going by Keto. And I remember, like, a couple years later, I found him again, like, on YouTube. Like, I uh, hit him back up and everything. And uh, people, like, sent me his channel. Um, and his, his YouTube channel is Keto, K-I-T-O, and he got like 3,000 subscribers, and it's like, damn, he really took on that, like, th this is what I mean, like, this kind of, this kind of shit happens, bro, like, these are our people, like, this is formative, it's formative, to say the least, but yeah, this is also, um, when Leafy was popping off and everything, and that kid who looked like Leafy, the same thing happened, we just call him Leafy, they're basically twins, bro. It was so funny because um, at the time, Leafy was like really, like, I think he was, he was growing like 2x every month. Like that was his growth level. And uh, everyone, like most people there knew who Leafy was. So everybody understood why, uh, like I saw the resemblance, but it was so weird. Like nobody, <sighs> nobody would ask. Like, who's Leafy, right? At least people who, like, the younger kids didn't know who he was. But the but the 16-year-olds, we all knew who he was. Or at least in, um, actually, some of the Unity kids do. Bro, the Unity kids are fucking losers. Honestly, that's a, that's a real good rivalry, Unity versus Unreal. And at this point, Unreal has taken over. Unreal has demolished Unity. Back then, Unity held strong, and they were actually on top of the game. Back then, like, they would make fun of us, and they they, they win. Because Unity was the superior platform for making games. It was much, much more flexible, and it used a, a much more industry-standard language for game development that more game developers know, um, or at least know well. But nowadays, yeah, Unreal is on top. Unreal is on top of the game, and now Unity just partnered with, like, some adware, literal, like, adware, malware company, um just for like, oh God, how far they've fallen. Pathetic, truly pathetic. But this is what I mean when it's like, these are my people. Like if I say, hey, this guy looks like Leafy, 
it's not like I talk to my brother and I ask him, hey, do you know, remember that KSI and Logan Paul fight? He's like, who's KSI and Logan Paul? He doesn't know. He doesn't keep up with any of this stuff. Like, he's trying to make it big on, like, in music and do all this stuff. And he keeps up with boxing and all this stuff. He keeps up with all this stuff. But he knows nothing about this industry. He knows nothing about, like, the way that the modern world works. Like, he doesn't... He doesn't involve himself with the new games that people play. He's so old school. But if I'm talking to these guys, I could say the most obscure thing. And they'd all know what I'm talking about. This is way before Content Cup, by the way. Um... And and the the story I got I got a few stories about like, or I got a story about like when I found Leafy at like eighty thousand subscribers, um, and like how, like my take on it. My, I, have a, I have a very unique take on it that I have yet to hear on like the whole Leafy situation, but that's a story for a different day. So, the way it was laid out is, um, when you'd walk up like the main set of stairs. Uh, there was this room. It was like an icebreaker room. That's where it started. It had like the pool table and everything. It was like a chill place. There was a kitchen there and all that. And that's where you meet everyone in the beginning. Um, and we became friends with so many people, bro. On site. On the first day. Like the moment we all got there. And I remember uh, Leafy was wearing those like glasses. Those like those like uh, meme glasses or whatever. And he, he said the stupidest shit. It was fucking hilarious. Like this dude's level of irony he's funnier than leafy like gen like obviously right it doesn't take much to be actually funnier than leafy but he was uh <laughs> i remember you know those like um those glasses that like everyone wears at like graduation things or things like that like they get them from like different places that are like, very cheap he i was like oh what's with the glasses he'd be like oh these are my hater shaders that's what he said he was fucking posing like he was like that uh, you know that kid in that, like, MLG picture where that would show up in all these, like, MLG montages? Like, this is a... This guy was the IRL manifestation of an MLG montage. Funnier than the real Leafy. Legit, on the first night, we had, like, 8 to 10 people in our room just chilling. Uh, not, like, sleeping over. That was a little later. But on the first day, before before they sent us all back into our rooms, we, like, devised a plan. Like, we were all experienced. And we knew what was coming because, um, like, we'd all been to camp before. So by the end of the camp, see, the, the the main thing that people will talk about, the main stories people have in camp is the raffle, the tickets that you get, right? The ticket system. Um, and, I, like, my um, my cousin, Ali, who, who went there the next year after me, uh, he's got a crazy story about it, too, which I'll, I'll see if I can I can bring him. Let me make a note of that, too. The raffle, the way that it works is, like, you get the tickets, you get these tickets throughout the camp. Uh, if you, like, do good things or whatever, or, like, do a good job, or if you, like, hey, give me 10 tickets if I can make this thing. And they're, like, um, if you can do this, I'll give you 15 tickets in, the, in like, Unreal Engine or whatever. That's how I got, because I, I already knew a bit of Unreal Engine. But I got a significant amount of tickets that way. And um, at the very end of camp, like, you'd go to the front, you'd, they'd have, like, different... Uh, basically like auctions or whatever and you'd put or raffles not auctions raffles and you'd put your tickets into the cups you put your name on them put them in these cups and whoever gets picked out of that raffle they get a prize and the number one prize is you get to uh pie any of the staff members at the camp and the pie was just a plate stacked with like hella shaving cream as much as they could stack on as much as they could put they legit put it like 10 inches high and they, they went all out with it, bro. They did not hold back. So um, we knew this. And so we decided. And there's also like a dunking thing that you could do um, with like water. But that's not as cool as pieing someone. Because like it's outdoors. So their sun is out and it's summer and they'll dry up. But pieing someone was like way cooler. So we decided we're going to pull all of our tickets together. And we're going to keep it all with one person. And at the end of the camp, that person would put their name on all of it. And then we would pie the director of the camp, DC. Yep. I don't think it had been done before, by the way. I don't, I don't think anybody did this. I don't think... I don't know if we were technically even allowed to do it. Uh, she, she even said, like, okay, uh, you get the option to pie anyone you want except for me. Or something like that. No, somebody said that. And it wasn't her. It wasn't her. But she was there with everyone. And there was, like, 
we probably could have worked some technicality into it. And this is like, she's not the, she's the leader of like the whole ID tech thing. Like it was, she was like the top dog. Um, there was nobody there who was higher than her in like the hierarchy. So that was our plan. It was a good plan. And she didn't like us. Like right from the start, we were loud, obnoxious. She actually hated us when I think about it. Like the whole way throughout camp, um, she would just like, she would give us bad looks. She wouldn't want to like interact with us in any nice way. And she was like aware of like our mischievousness. And word eventually got around that we wanted to pie her and she knew about it. So she kept this in mind when interacting with us. So night one, we make this plan. We're all chilling in the room. We're all on board. We all understand that we're, we're one of heart, right? We're bros, we're the boys. We're, we're pirates, part of the ship, part of the crew. And these counters keep walking by. They're patrolling the halls at night um, to make sure like everyone's asleep. And they do this for several reasons. One, they don't want us like falling asleep way too early and then the next, or way too late and then the next day we have to wake up early and we're like unable to wake up. Two, they don't want anyone sneaking out and getting hurt because it's their responsibility for our safety. Three, there were like two girls there in the other dorms next to ours. So it would get, uh, it, it could get messy if like they didn't patrol the halls, you know, like literally. So we, uh, we managed to avoid them where, um, it, like a couple nights in, we managed to avoid them where we all like four of us slept in the same room or like four or five of us slept in the same room on like the second night. And, um, then like by the third night, it was just, it was a fucking, it's a fucking mess. It was chaotic. So, and this all happened because we played Brawlhalla. This is literally why, like, Nick, oh my rip, dude. Nick, I've never seen someone who is able to pr play Brawlhalla at that level actually, like, pl like, I've seen that on YouTube. Like, YouTubers are able to play at a much higher level than Nick, but I've never met anyone in person who is that good at Brawlhalla. He's so much better than the rest of us. And I'll leave a link in the description. What was I saying? Brawlhalla, yeah. We all, like, we're all decent at Brawl, like we all understand the mechanics, and uh, we're playing the game like second nature, right? We aren't amateurs or anything. But let me just, I never thought I would ever say this. There were times where I was so sick of video games in ID Tech in all three camps that I just got back to working. Like that's how much we played video games. Also, I remember, um, because of Camp Mosaic the year before, or not the year before, that year, I remember where exactly everything was, like all the food, all the rooms, the pool, like the stairs and that, that lead to like all the cool places and all that stuff. I knew all of it. I knew the layout of everything. I still remember the layout actually. And this is like, bro, we'd walk around and stuff and like, I can't describe to you enough like the kind of vibe it was like everything we'd be doing was funny. I, I, I have to stress that now. I have to, I have to really hammer that in like everything we would do was just goddamn hilarious. Like when we'd go to the cafeteria, we would all like sit on the bleachers uh, like while they tell us like, uh, uh, oh, get back into your groups. Let's sit on the bleachers so we can account for everyone. And like me and like 15 other people decided it would be a good idea to lay down on the bleachers and take up as much space as possible. But we were strategic about it. We didn't lay horizontally, like one person on each step. We laid diagonally on the bleachers. So it would be like three or four steps that were taken up by us. So we'd all line up side by side and just take up as much space as possible. We were so obnoxious, like everything we did, we were just, it's like, it's not, this is what I always tell people, like when you, have, when you wanna have fun, it's not about the actual thing that you're doing, it's about who you do it with and how you do it. The fact that we were sitting down at the bleachers taking roll wasn't a fun thing. We made it fun because we were having fun doing it. Every night, right before uh, dinner, we'd like troll these people, like our counselor would leave and we would just start trolling everyone because she was day camp only. So we had the place to ourselves basically. We talked about whatever the fuck we wanted. We were able to cuss because like you can't cuss in front of like, it's a like camp, you know? 
And like parents are like, oh, no, we don't want our kids cussing and all that. So, you know, they got to uh, make sure that they punish you for cussing. But we played whatever music we wanted, loud speakers. Every night after dinner was some real shit, bro. It was some real shit. Unrestricted by adults. A bunch of 16-year-old boys who do nothing but play video games all day, just talking about life. Some great conversations came out of that. Like when the lights go off, it gets real intimate and and like, oh, I should mention, Randy wasn't there this time. He was like, bro, as hilarious as he was, everyone knew him. Everyone knew, like Nair knew him, uh, but we, we didn't have him at that, like he wasn't there that camp. He was a highlight of camp one and camp two. And he wasn't there for this one. I remember him being hilarious when playing Mafia, like making up like the craziest stories. Um, I remember him being a fucking beast at Ninja whenever we played. Uh, I remember uh, whenever we play on those modded servers, occasionally he'd play with us. So yeah, this time we didn't do any, any TF2. We played no TF2. It was all Brawlhalla and like a few other games. So, um, by day two, we, we were like, we were in the fucking trenches, bro. And our good friend Alex had came up with this brilliant strategy, okay? We were already way ahead in tickets. And, uh, we were basically, like, toying with, like, our ability to do things. And, like, because we were with the shit, you know? So we were making bets with, like, Voxel and, like, Candyman, these other people, to basically get as many tickets as possible. We had, like, 60 or something by like day two. And most people had like four tickets. So Alex had the idea, he'd go to a counselor and he'd say like, hey, I'm gonna pie you with these tickets. We have the most tickets. We're gonna put all of it into pieing you and we're clearly gonna win uh, because multiple people get to do it. They, they don't pick, one, they pick like three people um, and you all get to pie whoever, whichever uh, counselor you want. And I believe the second time, the second camp, uh, all, th all three people chose to pie the same person, but um, what's it called? There's no like rules for any of this thing. So Alex came up with this amazing idea. He'd go to the counters and he'd extort them basically. He'd tell them, this is a little bit of extortion. He'd tell them, I'm going to pie you with these tickets unless you give me some tickets so I'll, I'll go pie somebody else. And whoever's the highest bidder, you, you're safe. You'll be safe. This dude went around, did it to every single fucking counter. Take notes, kids. This is, this is the first, like, I'm, I'm, I don't like to give away legendary strats like this. I like to give away good free ideas, which I have a free ideas playlist, which I'll leave in the description. I got to make a link to that as well. But the free ideas that I give away are usually like decent ideas or good ideas. They're never legendary ideas. This was a legendary, it's extortion is what it is. That's all it is. It's extort, but it's for tickets. So use this wisely, okay? But yeah, by the second, by the third night, actually, our room was filled. Everybody, the whole ground is like filled with blankets and pillows and packed with people like crammed against each other, all sleep in sardine cell. And um, I was up on the top of Leafy. Actually, I was only up on top of Leafy on the second night because he was kind of fat. The other nights, I would, I would be like, nah, you're too big for this. It's going to fall and crush these like other people. Um, so it would alternate quite a lot, actually, but I was always up on, actually, no, I wasn't always up on top. I don't know why the hell they like took my bunk bed, basically. But, um, we had, we had, we had a pretty luxurious setup on the beds because like we were the top dogs, but like the rest of the kids were like sleeping on like piles of suitcases or piles of clothes or things like that. But we had it on lock. Um, and we slept differently each day. I didn't always sleep on the top bunk. Oh shit, there was this one dude, there was this one dude, his name was Saville, and I believe these guys still have his contacts, and he was like Hindu, so he was a vegetarian, but we called him vegan, actually we called him Vegan Gains, that was his nickname, Vegan Gains, he sat with us at lunch, he didn't, he still ate, like, even though he was Hindu, like, come on, we were Muslim, but we ate bacon, pork, so, oh, and you guys, like, if you, if you guys ever go to ID Tech, you gotta like troll like the little kids. That's like part of the highlights. Like we did that every year we were there. Like there'll always be these like groups of 12 year olds who will always go to like lunch with you guys. And they, they go in like different groups, but it's like, you'll always see them there. And so we'd get these like 12 year old kids, like 11, 12 year old kids at our tables. 
Because, like, it separates it out. Like, if you're a 13-year-old, if you're 13 years old or older, then you're part of different camps than if you're, like, the 12 years old or younger, you know? But, like, um, we'd, like, go to these, like, 12-year-old kids. They'd be sitting at our table. We'd be like, hey, what you think of those girls over there? These get, like, we talked to them about, like, the counselors. Like, 15-year-old kids would be asking 12-year-old kids what they thought, like, to rate the attractiveness of 20-year-old girls. Like, that's, the, the setup we had was so weird. It was so weird, but it was so fun. It was so fun. I remember there, were, there was, like, there was, like, these two little kids there who were, uh, you know, they were with all the other kids. All the kids were, like, pl addicted to, like, Agari or whatever, but, like, these kids were not. These kids broke out the Matrix, bro. They broke out the simulation, and they were, they would make fun of the other kids. It was Austin and Felix, and they sat with us at lunch. And uh, we would, like, teach them, like, cuss words in different languages. we teach them how to get girls. Teach them, like, how to be a boss, how to, like, prank people and all that. I remember, actually, I was 19. I tried to be a counselor at ID Tech, and I didn't get accepted. Holy, wait, holy shit. Wait. She was young. Our counselor, our Voxel, our counselor who was 19, she was younger than for us. And I also heard a rumor as a participant that the counselors... We're making two grand a week. Imagine being 19 years old. Uh, imagine seeing, like, if you're older than this, imagine seeing a 19-year-old girl making two grand a week doing, like, the dream job that these guys wish they were doing, also being a power lifter who also played other sports like lacrosse or whatever, who's, like, super with the shits and who's also a gamer. I, I can't even describe to you guys how cool she was. I'm trying my best to be as detailed as possible. But, like, it was, the whole camp, like, it was such a vibe, it's it's very difficult to describe this sort of thing. It's very difficult to put it into words, especially because of how fuzzy our memories were. But, like, all I could really say is, like, these are my people. Just joke after joke after joke. Everybody understood everything. We're all on the same page. All it took to become friends with someone was, it was so simple. It was like a, yo, what up? Yo, you see that drama alert last night? Yeah, that's it. That's all it took. That's all it took. And then we're friends. I remember um, at lunch and stuff, we would like finesse each other's food. Oh, lunch was so fun. Lunch was so fun. It was way more fun than the dinner or breakfast. Lunch was like peak energy. So like w whenever somebody wasn't looking, we would try to steal their food off their tray. It became like a game like who could finesse other people's foods without them noticing. We'd finesse each other's phones and each other's silverware and all that. I got hella good. I finessed, bro. I finessed way too much, way too much, um, and we would finesse each other's bacon. That was like the first and first thing we would do is we try to take strips of bacon off each other's trays. Um, actually, yeah, no. First time I went to ID Tech is the first time I tried bacon, uh, well, real bacon, and um, this time was when I was like, horking that shit down, bro. Like wolves, we were like wolves when we ate. Also, we tried different like drink combinations and stuff. Cause also, um, the the students, the college students, would be there and we'd see them, and we would like they'd have access to all these drinks, but we didn't. Um, but we'd go there, we'd try like we'd mix like blue, not like alcoholic drinks, but we mix like blue Powerade with Sprite. That turned out to be really good. Like, that was actually our drink of choice for like the second half of camp. It was. Blue Powerade mixed with Sprite. Try it. Try it. Trust me. Trust me. Like, it's a it's a different sort of vibe. It's a. Di I'm sure there's other sodas that taste like it, but this one was real nice. It was real nice and it was real smooth as well. Cause like Sprite is very strong. It's like after you take a few sips of it, it's like so good that you take a few sips and it's like difficult to like speak words after it. But Powerade, like 60% power Blue Powerade and 40% Sprite. It's such a smooth combination. It's just like you drink the whole thing so quickly, so easily. I don't know if that's very healthy, honestly. I got to do that. Hold up. I'm writing that down because I'm doing that with my dogs. I still remember how it tasted. I still remember how it tasted. I, now I'm really getting back into the vibe of ID Tech. Now I'm starting to remember some stuff. I remember um, if any, we'd make bets all the time. And if anyone lost a bet, they'd have to like go get someone a drink. It'd always be blue powered and Sprite every time. Actually, nobody even, nobody there even liked Powerade. Like, none of the students got Powerade, uh, college students included. But because of this, they didn't, like, they didn't feel the need to 
uh, uh, like put a large amount of Powerade in there. Legit, it was only our table drinking it. And we drained the whole thing. Like other drinks, they had a lot of supply, like a lot of stock of it, but we drained all the Powerade. But yeah, um, I believe they went out of order and then like the like two or three days before the end of camp, they finally restocked and, and we had it back again. And we like celebrated on the last day by like draining it back again. We, we, we made them run out of Powerade twice just because of us, just because of our stupid combination. I remember how fun it was being a kid, never worrying about having too much sugar. I still kind of, I still enjoy like drinking sugar until I like feel like throwing up. Enjoy being a kid, you guys. If you're kids, like if you can eat like 10 Hershey bars and uh, and not, and still not feel sick, like enjoy it. Because right now, if I eat like, if let's say I eat like four or five Hershey bars, right, full size, I can't do anymore. I start to feel sick after that point. But when I was a kid, I could eat like 15 every hour, king size. Like there's a lot of things like I can't do like at the gym, at the park, like on the monkey bars and all that stuff. And, and this is obvious stuff. Like if you can still do these things, do it. Have fun with it, you know? I regret not experiencing uh, like sugar and girls as much as I could have when I was that age. But yeah, this is, this is like, I'm gonna get in trouble for talking about this, but back to Eddie Tech. So on like the, on like the third night of Eddie Tech, we watched um, Who Killed Captain Alex. And uh, on the fourth night of Tech, we watched Mean Creek, uh, which was like, you know that movie with Josh Peck? Like a lot of memes are, are from that one. Like, you know, Josh Peck like going like, shut the fuck up, Clyde. And like the, his daddy splattered his brains all over the wall. So many memes, so many memes. Bro. We just watched meme movies. And Who Killed Captain Alex was the best one. We would legit be going around this is how you know we were like animals, bro. We were, it was so carnal, our behavior, some primal shit. We'd walk around and start chanting like, deadly commando, deadly com movie, movie, movie. All that, like we'd be barking and stuff. We'd literally be barking at each other. It was straight up some like the boys locker room type shit. That's how it was, but everywhere. It, there was no, the entire camp was just one giant boys locker room. And Voxel couldn't stop us. And she was like, cool with it. She was like, ah, whatever. So, um, uh, oh, that dude, um, that dude, I believe his name is Jack. No, Jack. Okay. Yeah, no, Jack. Um, he brought like a stuffed penguin to camp and we all wanted the penguin for ourselves. And, uh, we'd all like take it from each other and stuff. And by the end of the camp, we pretty much ran a train on that penguin. Like, it was ripped up. There was, like, dirt all over it. It had been, like, kicked around outside. Um, I don't even think he took it back home. I think, like, I was the last one to have it. And I just left it in my room before I left. Um, also, Leafy. Like, we were always boosting this kid. Everybody had their own roles. Everybody had their own, like, uh, we were role-playing, basically. So we were, like, we were, like, Yo, Leafy, the fucking god, bro. He has so many subscribers on YouTube. We try to convince the younger kids that this is actually Leafy. And um, he played in that joke so fucking well. Like, he would walk around, like, telling people what to do. He would straight up demand tickets from kids. It was fucking hilarious. He'd be like, hey, I'm Leafy. Hand over your tickets. And all that shit. Like, he was just one big joke. One big shit post. Um, and every time a Leafy video would drop, because Leafy was, at the time, the actual YouTuber was dropping videos daily. And uh, Leafy would come to us next morning. He'd be like, hey, did you guys see my latest video I posted? The funniest, actually, the funniest moment we had with him was um, we're all about to like, go outside to like play some games or whatever. And the counselors are trying to get everyone to be hype, right? To like play like Frisbee or something um, to like out sneak each other. Uh, but I'll get to that. So uh, he's like, oh, everyone, uh, no, no, no. Not he's like, I'm saying he's like, as in like the counselor who's like hyping everyone up. He's like, oh, everyone make some noise. You know, we're going to go play this game and everyone cheers and stuff. And like they do this like multiple times, right? And I forgot what they said exactly, but um, 
he's like, the counselor's like, oh, uh, we're going outside. Uh, everyone make some noise. We're going outside. We're going to play Frisbee. And everyone's like, yeah. And then, like, as, it, as everyone's cheering, this dude puts his hand in the air, and he's like, Leafy! And everyone yells, goes like, Leafy! Hell yeah! We fucking dwarf the earlier chants, because it's like only the little kids that are getting hyped like this, but we all start losing our minds when this guy go, just yells out of nowhere, Leafy! He's like cheering for himself. He's like, it's like the most ego shit ever. It was so funny. It was so funny. But he was, he was a weird kid. He was a weird kid, but he had a good sense of humor. Imagine, imagine if Content Cop came out sooner, we would flame on him nonstop. Like, everybody was just falling into their roles. Like, we didn't, we did not have our own personalities at camp. We were, like, one giant, like, conglomerate of shit posts. That's what we were. If Content Cop that came out earlier, it would not have gone down that smoothly. We would have given him so much shit, dude. And I remember when we were all, like, yelling, like, it was so stupid the way it happened. It was so funny. He did it unprovoked. We didn't, like, tell him to do this or anything. He'd be like, we're going to play Frisbee. Yeah, woo. Leafy. Hell yeah, Leafy. Yeah, go Leafy. Just for no reason. And the counselors just standing around confused. Because, like, the counselors don't know who Leafy is. They're all, like, 19, 20, 20 year old years old. They don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, and this dude, it was so funny. He would never take his tray up. Because it's like... You're at the cafeteria, and you have to take your tray up to the stairs um, to, like, give it to, like, the ladies over there, right? And so he was such a boss. We'd always argue about, like, whoever takes the trays up. Um, so we'd like, be like, hey, if you take my tray up, I'll give you, you know, two tickets or whatever, right, to take the trays. Um, Leafy never once took his tray up. He would just demand others take it because, you know, he's Leafy. He'd be like, he'd be like, he'd be like why? He'd be like, what do you mean, why? I'm Leafy, and just scoff at them. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, my apologies, God. I'll take your tray. It was so stupid. But we were acting. I literally, like, I would hear people talking across the hall, like, um, yo, you going to Afraz's room tonight? And that sort of thing. Or, like, Nair's room tonight? It was usually people would say Nair's, Nick and Nair's room. Um, I was, like, third place, kind of. Such a shame. It's because I'm, I'm, like, younger, but, and I'm also, like, smaller. But, man, we really fell into our hierarchies. We fell into our, like, roles. It was so cool. I love that. I love that environment. Those are my people. These are my people, bro. But, yeah, the, like, people would be talking, like, hey, we go and it's movie night. Like, what the hell you mean it's movie night? If we're just we're putting a laptop in front of the thing and we're watching a movie. You're going to call it movie night? But it turned out to be like that. We'd be like, oh, what are you bringing? Oh, I'm bringing Oreos. What about you? Oh, I'm bringing Swedish fish. Oh, for real? Uh, uh, and like, bro, our room was the hub. Like we were, our room was the porn hub. But um, we were the fucking alphas of that camp. Like me, Nick and Nair, from day one, people respected us. We were, we were the top dogs. That's why I loved it so much. Because like this kind of community, when I say like these are my people, this is the kind of community that I can like, climb to the top of the hierarchy of like this is the kind of community where i thrive where i reach the highest levels of, of the field it was great it was great dude and on the movie nights like we'd we'd like bring like people would bring crackers to the room and they'd like stack them on top of each other like tetris um we would be watching movies on like nars like shitty 13 inch laptop uh or, or actually, no, we watched the movies on the laptop that Nick brought. Uh, Nair's laptop, we used it for other things. But we'd be torrenting movies, and we'd keep the volume down. It's such a small laptop screen, and we keep the volume so low because we didn't want to alert the counselors. It was just the, just the environment, bro. Forget the movie. Forget, like, the enjoyment of the movie. Just the environment of all of us, like, bunched up together on top of each other with, like, blankets hanging over everyone and, like, snacks laid across all the, like, the floor in between everyone, like... 15 people watching a movie in this small ass room and like trying trying not to laugh so we don't wake up the counselors and like make them go us make us go back to our rooms we legit be covering each other's mouths so we didn't we, we weren't laughing like watching who could captain alex and stuff that was that was peak that was heaven right there um what else what else 
I downloaded so many cracked games too. And like, okay, don't get me wrong. The Unreal Engine stuff we did, like the work we did was, was actually pretty fun. Like I created like a little gravity lift in there. Like I told, I'm like, hey, uh, I'm trying to create a gravity lift. How many tickets can I get if, you, if I do that? And Vox was like, I'll give you 25 tickets if you do that. And I'm like, make it, make it 50 or something like that. I said, make it 30 or 50 or something like that. I don't think it was 40. I said either 30 or 50. And uh, she's like, all right, cool. I make it in like two minutes. Two minutes legit is all it takes. And uh, she's like, oh, uh, okay, here. And we like drained her, bro. She was like running low very quickly being our counselor. But um, I actually almost made an NPC in, um, in, in the game, like an NPC that chases you and attacks you. Uh, I created quite, I created like a one way door that like pushed you through so you can only go in once. Like it wasn't boring. It wasn't unproductive work. Um, I did a bit more like node stuff. I really like the node stuff. I really like the logic of nodes, which is why I think I want to learn DaVinci because I really like node based stuff. But, um, I wasn't that great at like level design. Nick's level design and Nair's level design was really cool. Um, by like the fifth day, we had all mastered like our own different set of skills for like game design. We should, we should make games. We should make games. Cause Nick was really good at like making worlds and like layouts for things. And I was really good at like the uh, uh, scripting side of things. But yeah, we were, uh, we, we, we had a good time across the board. Like there was never a dull moment of camp. Damn, I'm kind of running dry on ideas. I need to put myself back into the mind state of uh, ID Tech, so that way I could like, what was I, okay. So uh, third day, fourth day, we had our movie nights, whatever. By the fifth day, um, we were like, we were still finessing shit from each other. That was so fun. I don't know if Nick and I actually remember that, but like we'd all mastered the skill of like, of, of realistically going like, hey, was that thing there last time? And just like pointing at some, some random thing. And while that person looks, we take something from their tray while they're while they're like looking away, um, and it was a buffet, by the way. So it, it's like normally how college is, right? So we weren't like depriving people of food, right? It was just a game. I remember on like the fifth day, Nair at one point, he legit like he goes to someone and he go like so obnoxiously. He goes like, "Yo, was that window there yesterday?" And then the guy looks over there. The whole table looks. It was so stupid. And Nair legit grabs this and dude's this dude's entire stack of tickets at the other on the table. It was the stupidest thing. I didn't even think about it would work. It was not supposed to work. It was like a meme. He goes, was that window there yesterday? And everyone's looking. And this dude steals his tickets and he doesn't notice. He doesn't notice. We came back. He came back to our table. He goes to this table, does it. He comes back to our table and he starts splitting the tickets amongst ourselves under the table. Fucking, I don't even know how that worked. I don't even know how that, he managed to do that. But um, yeah. Now I'm now I'm in the zone. Now I'm now I'm starting to really remember what was happening. That shit was so fun. That shit was such a fucking vibe, dude. Like playing Valhalla was fun and all, but like that sh the, the shit we were doing when we were not playing games was so much more fun. Honestly, video games are kind of fucking boring. Like Valhalla, getting good at brawl, is is only as fun as like the. The most fun experience you can have playing Brawlhalla is 1% of the experience that you can have just being with friends in person, just hanging out, just kicking it, talking and stuff. Um, oh, I should talk about the Frisbee thing. We were playing Ultimate Frisbee, and I don't know how exactly it happened, but for some reason, we all just started saying out snake. Like, out snake, we would like yell that. I don't know. It sounds weird. Like, um, a frost. What do you mean you were all just saying out snake? It's exactly how it sounds. Like it's totally random. Like I, you're, I'm just as confused as you guys. It was like some cult thing. I don't know why the hell we were saying it. it's like mass hysteria. We all just started yelling out snake whenever like any major thing would happen. Like, oh, somebody would drop uh, the Frisbee or whatever. And be like, oh, out snake, out snake. As simultaneously, whenever it touched the ground. It was a real like community bonding chant, if I do say so myself. But um, by the time we came back and like rejoined with the rest of the camp, you know, after playing Ultimate Frisbee, the entire camp was pretty much like, they were all 
it was mass hysteria is the best way I could describe it. Nothing would happen. And everyone, out snake, out snake. It got, it got old real quick, real quick. But it was nice whenever our small group of people, like whenever we use it tastefully. But the normies, they almost ruined it, bro. Because like, I mean, they almost ruined it. They would have ruined it if we were there for like another few days. But the only reason why they couldn't ruin it is because we weren't actually, the camp is not that long. It's a one week camp, a little bit longer than a week. But it became, I believe it was, it was more of a term. Well, it's something you sort of feel, right? It's not like there's no rules. But I, the way I generally saw it used is like, if you mess something up or whenever you fail at something, like if you drop the Frisbee or if Nick's project crashed, because uh, his project crashed pretty often, we'd be like, damn, my project's out snaked, bro. Or like uh, one time during our daily pillow fights, one dude got hit and like knocked to the ground. And this dude went like, I just out snaked you, bitch, or whatever. Like, And uh, we played Frisbee a couple times, actually. And um, the second time we were there, that term became like, uh, the first time we were just saying it, the second time we'd be like, Oh yeah, we about to out snake these guys right here, bro. Like we'd be in a huddle and and like what the fuck are we thinking? Out snake? Like what the what's wrong with us? Like what does that even mean? How are we all in agreement that we're in a huddle? We're going, oh these guys are about to get out snaked, and that's hyping us up. How does that make any sense? But um it was like uh whenever we'd be eating, we would try to like jump the stairs. Like after eating, we try to like jump down like as many stair steps as possible. So I could jump down seven stair steps. I remember that was my record. Um, I could jump down consistently, like four stair steps, five stair steps, but seven was my record while I was there. At least it's the, in, in the Emory, or like mark this down, in the Emory cafeteria stairs when I was 16 years old, um, I'm not sure now, but I was able to jump down seven stair steps at a time. Um, and uh, I tripped and fell and they were like, oh, you got out snaked, you got out snaked. But, uh, yeah, even the little kids were saying, out snake. Actually, the little kids were so, bro. Nah, fuck it. Fuck all the, like, taboo shit. The little kids were cool. Like, we trolled, we didn't do much trolling with the little kids. Um, I did a lot more trolling, like, the second camp. Like, I would join their Minecraft servers, and then I would um, OP myself, and just change the game mode for myself only to creative, and just, like, pour lava on everyone else's, everyone else's houses and stuff, while they were, like, trying to sleep or like uh, spawn in a bunch of creepers into their survival world or like uh, copy and paste like commands into the server console. Like there, were, there, there was a command, there was one command in particular that would change the spawn rate of mobs from like 100 to like 9,000 or some shit like that. And it would just be overflowing with mobs. It was hilarious, bro. It was hilarious. Um, but that was all in the second camp. But we did troll some in the, in the third one while we were there, but uh, what else? That was, that was day five. That was day five where, where I, like, got my record of seven steps. Um, I believe Nick and Nair both had more steps than me, but I never really went all out with it. I didn't want to, like, hurt myself or nothing, you know? I should have pushed further. I think I could have done more. But seven steps is my record. Um, so yeah, day, day six, right? We're, like, we're sleep deprived. Uh, everyone there, counselors included, are sleep deprived. We were like filled with sugar. We we're hyped up on energy. Um, there was a vending machine there, and we were getting stuff in there all the time. Um, and at night, oh my god, this was the day after the out snake stuff got out of hand. At night, literally, we're like the counselors are not patrolling the halls anymore. We're having these like mosh pits in the hallways, like jumping all over, like on each other's beds, and like giving each other piggyback rides, and like trying to like um this was this was very similar to Chinese patrol actually how does this keep happening i just now realized this is very similar to Chinese patrol because um they were shaving my face it wasn't like they were going up trying to like shave my head or whatever it wasn't as out of hand as study patrol but it was like people were running around from room to room hall to hall and uh it was very different because it was a lot smaller um and it wasn't like it wasn't like all wooden and rustic it was very camp like you know like everybody's room everybody's Rooms had like stickers on them with their names on it and everything. It was like, it was just a different vibe. Um, which makes me wonder, like two totally very similar experiences when described, but have such different vibes. I wonder what kind of vibes I'm missing in my life. I wonder what experiences I have yet to experience, you know? But we were, the counselors didn't come through, but we messed around so much 
that uh, actually they shaved my face into a Hitler stash. They gave me a Hitler stash. But we were messing around so much that we woke up the counselors. And when the counselors come up, comes up, his name is Oxford, I believe. Yeah, I remember. His name is Oxford. And he had like a beard and everything. And he was super chill. And he, like, you would not expect him to do something like this, but like he comes up. He's so tired and we're keeping him up. That's why he comes up. He doesn't care about what we're doing, but we literally are keeping him up. And he goes like, yo, dog, there's only like a couple nights left. Like, can you guys just like stay in one room and just like stay a bit quieter? Otherwise, we'll all get in trouble with DC, you know? And we were like, yeah, okay, we'll be quiet. Just like, don't tell, don't tell DC. But even though we're saying that, we could not be contained. We could not be contained. Because about an hour later, after we decided to stay quiet, it went right back to the fucking, like, we're throwing shit. We're acting like animals, like, running down the halls. We start slamming the, um, the doors. The doors, trying to make, like, beats and stuff. We're slamming each of the doors. And, uh, like, oh, one of the doors is the kicks, and the other door is the snare, and the other door is the hi-hat, and we're, like, slamming them. It was so, it was so comically loud. Like, it was, like, the cliche, like, sitcom type of loud. Like, this is, this would have made for such viral TikToks, bro. You know that, like, um... Uh, I hear your heart beat to the beat of the, the boom, boom, and like that shit. It was like that nonstop. It was the best way to describe it was comically loud, comically. And Oxford fucking woke up again because we were so loud. He was on a different floor, by the way. He was across the whole building. There were like living rooms and kitchens separating us. It was that loud. And I mean, like. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was huge. Because I remember on the first few nights, we'd go outside. We'd walk around. We'd sneak out. We'd go to the kitchen. And we'd, like, try to take all the snacks and stuff like that. Um, wow, this has a lot of parallels when I'm saying it out loud to uh, Aluma. But it was totally different. Totally different. Um, we didn't actually, like, steal on any of that stuff. We were just, like, walking around, like, being sneaky, basically. Because that was exciting for us back then. We were little kids. Um, and, uh... What the fuck? This is so crazy. It's so crazy that a week after this camp, after like doing all this dumb shit, I lose my virginity. Like, how was I such a loser and then so cool after a week? How does this happen? Unbelievable. And if you want to know that story, I'll leave the link to that in the description. It's the story of the cruise. Um... So I'll leave the full cruise story in the description as well. So yeah, he wakes up again and uh, legit, he's like, I, I don't know how they woke up. Maybe he was awake the whole time because they were really far away. They were on a whole different floor. Uh, I think there were two floors beneath us actually. And um, there's plenty of space in between us. And he walks up to us after telling us, like he already told us that night, like y'all gotta stop. And when he comes up, like, the hallway, he, like, turns the corner, and he sees us. And it, it's like a fucking sitcom, bro. Because he just freezes after seeing us. And we all just, like, we freeze in response. It legit, it's straight sitcom energy. People have, like, toilet paper in their hands. There's, like, mad piggyback rides happening. People are, like, throwing shit at each other. Not, like, hangers and stuff like that, but it was, like minor shit like clothes and things you know they're not actually like injuring each other but um and i'll never forget how i was caught because i was inside one of the rooms like everybody in the hallways was uh f f like basically like frozen like a fucking um like a sitcom but i was in one of the rooms and people were in the rooms they were like still doing shit they were still yelling stuff and i was in the room i was like yelling like out snake out snake and i had my uh finger coming out of my zipper like, you know how people, like, do that? Like, kids, like, will take their finger and put it out of their pant zipper. And so I was doing that, and I was yelling out snake because I'm like, hey, this actually makes sense because it's the snake that's out. You know, get it? Get it? So I'm running around, and I'm, like, trying to, like, hook people. I'm trying to, like, grab people with my finger while it's out of my pants. And I'm like, out snake, out snake. And I'm leaving the room to go to the room right across from us. Like, I'm about to run in there and, like, hook the person who's in that room, um, and I'm, I'm like yelling out snake as I leave the room with my finger coming out of my pants, 
and I see Oxford on my left and he's just there, just frozen, staring at me. And I'm like, oh, and he's like, Doug, what the hell is going on here? You guys have to sleep. And like, <sighs> there was just one of him. There was like 30 of us. In the presence of a bunch of like 16 year old kids who were having way more fun than you can imagine at that age, he couldn't stop us. And he was like 27 or something like that. You know, he couldn't stop us. Strength in numbers, bro. Strength in numbers. I always say it. It's like Project X. He didn't even try to stop us. He didn't even try. It's straight up like Project X. They straight it, they, they tried to wait us out, actually. They let us drain all of our energy. A good strategy. And it was it was a win-win because you know, you try to drain this wall of our energy. That's what's supposed to happen, bro. We're kids. We're supposed to run out of energy. Um, actually, no, no, no. Before that, Oxford saw one of the kids trying to go downstairs to the other side of the hall. And he was like, hey, hey, you can't go there. Um, and I don't know how, but some of us, like, we just unanimously decided. I was a part of this. It was like me and like eight other kids. We just unanimously, unanimously decided to block him. So it's like. He comes up from like one side and the other side, there's like on the other side of the hall um, on where the dorms are, there's like an emergency exit and there's like a window showing the outside. And then you can go to the right and there's like stairs that go downstairs. Right. Um, so there's like two ways to go upstairs and downstairs. And they're like, hey, you can't go that way. And he's like going to the kid who's on the other side of the hall. But we're all in the middle of, of, of the both of them. Right. So you, we just build a wall in between them. And we're like, you cannot pass this wall. You just got Donald Trump. You just got trumped. We, we we're like, this is Trump's wall and you will not cross. You will not pass us. It was straight up. A, we were straight up a walking shitpost, a collective in sync. Like. Fucking what's the word for it? Emergent shitpost. All of us. We were not individuals. We were a sole entity that night. And for the remainder of camp, every single participant was on the exact same frequency. And this is what I mean when I say these are my people. We think the same. We're, we're, this is boys' locker room energy. <sighs> Remembering it now, like, what a fucking vibe, man. What a fucking vibe. That was peak. That was the, that was the highlight. Actually, that was better than the cruise and Mosaic. In, in Summer 16, this was the best thing in Summer 16. We legit started a whole capitalist market of goods and services with our tickets as our currency. You aren't supposed to do this, by the way. You're supposed to keep your own ticket. You're supposed to get tickets when you're like rewarded for good behavior and then spend them at the end. Nope. We had a damn economy exchanging them for like favors and even real money sometimes. I swear, bro, if we had another week there, we would have started like a whole last like prostitution ring with tickets with like the two girls in the whole camp. And you know what? We probably, we probably would have done it with the guys too. But um, every night, man, we were partying it up. We were having a good time. This is how this is how I know that we're meant for this lifestyle. Because literally, like a couple months ago, um, I go to the strip club with a, with a couple of my homies, and uh, it's like we're 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 memers, right? We're not actually going to the strip club to like hook up with these girls. Some of them are, but we like make fun of the guys who do, and you know. We're like throwing ones and stuff, and I bring like ten dollars. Um, and this kid who was with us, oh kid, I say kid because he technically wasn't even old enough to go to the strip club, but he was like around or he was like 19, 20 years old, something like that. He starts throwing admit one tickets. He's like, watch me throw these ones, and it's admit one tickets on the girls. And it's the same shit because the tickets we got were admit one tickets. Nothing's changed. Like People, people, I was literally talking about this last stream. People think you need all this money to have fun, live an awesome life. I swear, bro, the level of happiness I have now supersedes that of every single, like, every single person I know. I'm the happiest person I know. And I know a lot of rich millionaires. I know a couple billionaires too, like Ismaili billionaires. I've had like, you know, ups and downs. But if you can't have fun with admit me tickets with a group of your friends, you're not going to have fun with real dollar bills with a group of your friends. You're not going to have fun regardless. Okay. There's fun people and there's boring people and fun people make it work. 
most of the time though we would just um we would use the tickets to just get people to pick up our trays of food it was just more efficient to have one person take everybody's trays and everybody's cups um and plates on their own tray so that way we didn't like all have to go you know just time efficiency or energy efficiency rather but um yeah we would just give that person tickets to do so this was a uh, this was more in um camp three than in camp two but or sorry i'm more in a more in camp two than in camp three but we we played a lot of like games that were like decided by uh uh counselors like um sometimes we would play chopsticks to see who would take the tray in camp two or we play like rock paper scissors and things like that um and i played chopsticks uh or we play that like gun game and i played this play these games with zoe for like years when we were little so i don't lose like ever oh let me let me actually show i want to show that gun game let me make a note of that so um yeah i think uh no this is camp three this is camp three it might have been camp two i'm not exactly sure but i think this was camp three so we're telling everyone to like uh we're telling this one dude like oh stack up everything on this dude on, on your tray because he like lost a bunch of bets or whatever and there's like seven trays with all like plates and silverware and like leftovers and cups and all that and um a lot of the a lot of the time we'll have like drinks that are like half full half empty however you whatever you want to call it and they'll still be in the cups and uh if you're taking all this stuff you basically have to balance all the cups um and a lot of times the trays would be so full that they would have to float the cups into each other like they'd have to take one of the cups like they take one of the cups that are half full, put it inside another cup that's half full, put that inside another cup that's half full, and it would be like a seven cup tall stack that would be like way too high. Um, and I remember one time, the, the stack was so high, it was unbelievably high, and it was, each cup was like full, it was like, they were on average like half full of like whatever liquid they had inside it. And my dumbass, I didn't actually think about this, I wasn't thinking, but I was like, I decided to make the cups go lower so I'm like, oh, don't worry, bro. I got you. I'll make it. I'll make it a bit smaller. So um, all the cups were like floating in each other. Basically, they were like floating. He was like sitting there, and um, I took the top cup, and he's holding the tray. He's standing up. He's holding the tray. I'm like, don't worry, bro. I got you. And I press it down, and it forces the drinks out into like a giant like fountain, and it showers all this like soda on like everyone around us. That was legit the funniest thing that's ever happened to me at ID Tech. I ruined, like, 12 people's outfits in one fatal swoop. One motion, I went, don't worry, bro, I got you. And just ruined everyone's outfits. It went everywhere. <laughs> like, there was a drink still inside the cup. I didn't think about it. I knew it was floating in there. But I just pressed the top cup down, and it made, like, it was so cool. It looked so cool. Because each uh, layer made like an umbrella of liquid that went everywhere, like a Wi-Fi umbrella. That shit was so, that shit had me on the floor, bro. That shit was so funny. And uh, that wasn't the only time that happened either. We actually started to use this as a weapon after I did this the first time. Um, and cause everyone knows I'm not the type of person to like care if stuff gets spilled on me, right? I walk around in the rain a lot. Um, I'll jump in the pool with like full clothes on. Um, I mean, like, look, at, I do nothing to my hair. It's clear, like, I don't care what happens to me on the outside. My skin is waterproof. And as, as long as nothing goes from the inside to the outside or outside to the inside, I don't care what happens, right? So um, we literally weaponize this. We literally weaponize this where we, we try to be like, uh, uh, here, try to get this guy. So we take like five cups and the dude would be holding it and he tried to like spray it on them by pressing the cups together. It became like a weapon. It was so cool, bro. It was so cool. But um, I remember this dude... This, like, kid, he was, like, 12 years old, so creative. He, he walks up. He's, he has, like, four cups in his hand, and they're all, like, floating in each other. They didn't even drink it. They got, they filled up the cups just to do this. And he goes up to this, like, counselor, and he's, like, he's, like, give me all your tickets. The counselor's sitting down. He stands up. He's going, he, he's right next to their table. He's standing up next to their table, and there's, like, a, there's like four counselors at a table. And he's, like, give me all your tickets, or I squeeze the cups. And it's, like, dude. That's so badass. That's so cool. That's so cool. Straight up role play. And I fucking love it. But yeah. 
in the in the second camp people were very reluctant to give up their tickets not in the third camp we were trading tickets we were throwing tickets around like it's fucking I don't know there's no other way to describe it tickets I guess but um oh wait this one also happened in the second camp we found condoms it's not that much of a surprise now I mean it's a college right but for us kids like found, finding a box like full of condoms we just grabbed handfuls we just grabbed them and eventually the entire camp was like layered with like condoms just hanging around everywhere it was so fun being immature I still like being immature I don't give a fuck I'm gonna be immature try and stop me so yeah I uh I uh, there's only there's only really one more thing to say really unless I think of something else but I think that's everything but the the end of camp it's like the seventh day or something like that I think there's seven no there's like seven plus the day in the beginning where you show up and you introduce her, and then there's like the graduation or what I don't know uh, but it's around a week um and so the last day before the adults come there's the raffle and uh I don't know if I saw the video. I know someone does. I don't, I know. Fuck. Uh, fuck, dude. Wait, I know I have this video. I know this video. There's two angles, but I, I think I only have one. Um, it's, I have it. I have it. So this dude, uh, the Brazilian kid. Damn, I forgot his name. It started with a J, I think. I think it was like a, uh, I think it was like Josiah or something. And so it's like the raffle, the way that it like, there's a bunch of other prizes, but like ultimately all people really want to do is get the prize where you dunk somebody, dunk one of the counselors and get the prize where you get to pie one of the counselors. And they give you like a bucket of water to like dunk them. But we're like, fuck it. Uh, we're going to do the dunking before any of this happens. So I remember um this dude this brazilian kid we convinced him to do it um we we're like hey you gotta put you gotta pour cold water on there while he's still showering because he was showering he went in after all of us and he had yet to get out and this was like one of the nights uh this is like the this is like the fourth night i believe third or fourth night and so that's him that's him right here this is nick why does he have a tennis ball in his hand we just had so much dumb shit going on bro So he's like, we convince him. We're like, it's one of these showers, bro. We, we convince him. We're like, go in the shower. While this dude's naked, go in the shower. Bro, we were on that gay shit, bro. We did not give a fuck. It's filthy Frank shit, bro. We did not, like, uh, we were all very comfortable with our sexuality. But there's, like, five other people here with us. It's late at night. And we convince him. We take this water. It's cold water. This is, like, ice water. And we're like, we got we to gotta get you to pour it in while he's in the shower. While he, go, walk in the shower, pour it on his head, and walk out. I don't know if there's sound. You can kind of hear sound. What up, DB? Which one are you? Oh, what up? He goes, <laughs> he goes in the wrong shower. He goes, yo, what up? As this dude's coming out, he goes into somebody else's shower. Which one are you? Oh, what up? <laughs> <laughs> he walks out and sees all of us, and we're like, run. That shit was so funny, bro. That shit was so funny. There was another angle. It's a better angle of it. It's a better... I don't know if I have it, though. But, um... Yeah, we, we were... Like, the reason why we did this is because we knew about, like, the whole dunking thing. We knew, like, this is part of the culture of, uh... Of ID Tech, right? And then, on the last day... Um... On the last day, we're there. You know, we got all of our tickets. We Our strategy had paid off. You know, we had such an absurd amount of tickets. I believe it was that kid, Matthew, who was, um who was like our representative basically, uh, who, who put his name on all the tickets and he knew the will of the group basically. So he goes to the front on his last day um, and he's, he goes, puts all of our tickets into the pie uh, cup. And the kids are in the front, we're in the back, we're in the back, we're chilling because you know the cool kids are in the back. And all the little kids, the like 11 year old, 10 year old kids are like in awe, like they're shocked. They're like, what? What is this? Because they see like, because they all try to put their tickets in there. They're like, oh, I have five tickets. Let me put it in there. And we're like, yeah, I'm gonna put 
340 tickets into this thing. And they like we watch these the kids' reactions as their like hopes and dreams get crushed. Like they're never gonna buy these these counters, and we're like laughing at them. Yeah, we were evil as kids, bro. The environment was just different. Bullying was welcomed. That that came out wrong. But you know what I mean. Um so anyways, it, it finally comes to it, and uh our guy Matthew, he he did right by us, bro. Cause DC knows we want a pyre. She knows. And we're all sitting down on like the grass outside and the staff is all like around us and DC's in the back. She's behind us. Um, she's like, I'd say like 10 feet away from us. And the guy picks up the ticket and DC's standing right there. And the dude goes, the dude calls up the name. He's like, Matthew. And we all look back at DC. The moment we turn around, she's already like halfway gone into the room. She's fucking booking it. She's hauling ass, like running back to the building. It's like to see this like super overweight girl, like with an attitude, did not like us at all. We see her like cower in fear, like running, like her fat folds, like running. It's it was the best feeling ever, bro. We were laughing so hard. The laughing alone was worth it, cause like we never did get to pie her, but the, just the laughter alone from that moment, that was worth it by itself. But um, Matthew decided, well, we decided together collectively that Matthew would get to pie the hot instructor, the hot girl. Uh, and that was totally fine, you know? You know, we got a little bit of eye candy. And uh, damn, I honestly, I think Woodstock was the name of the girl in the second camp. I don't think her name was Woodstock in the third camp. But um, like, bro, to, the, to us, to us at that age, like, let me tell you all something. To, to the girls watching this, if you're not aware, to like all four girls watching this, 16-year-old boys fantasize about college girls more than any other kind of, like, college girls. It doesn't matter if they're if they're of age, you know? If you're 16 years old and you're, you're a boy, chances are your top-tier girl is in college at that age. But that's just because of the way the girls act in college more than anything else. There's a reason why the top porn stars are not actually the most attractive ones body-wise, but they have the best attitudes they're the freakiest or whatever right that's why it's why it's it's a lot of it's personality driven it's it's about the way that they they speak and the way that they sound and all that you know the way their facial expressions and stuff holy shit dude when i got to college i actually realized like there isn't actually all that much to look forward to like nowadays girls are so liberal in the way that they in the way that they look that uh it isn't such a it isn't such a I thought I was going to be competing. I thought it was going to be a fun little journey of chasing these girls, right? Of, of self-improvement, trying to reach girls way out of my league. Nope, no girls were out of my league. In college, everybody's below my league. I think just college itself is below my league. But maybe that's me being a bit egocentric. Or maybe that's just respecting college. Regardless, I'm going to do both. But getting to see this, like... 20 year old girl with like white cream on her face all the kids there bro we may be born apart but we are one of heart and we were all thinking the same thing that day i swear to god bro even the counselors are thinking the same thing except for like maybe like the two girls but out of like there were like 400 guys there they the girls don't count so yeah that was that was fun and then um and then what's it called they, they said for like that they put out another ticket all right who's who's gonna pie next they put it out they're like nope that you can't do it twice and we're like laughing we're like oh fucking course we got it twice they stood no chance nobody stood a chance against us bro we were literally extorting tickets from people literally extorting them collecting taxes but um yeah and then uh they got to the dunk thing where they got to dunk someone and one of the dudes did it on uh like a different female participant or a female uh, part, uh, female counselor, and uh, thank you to whoever that guy was. But uh, she was not like, she was not the hottest girl there. We definitely got the hottest one, Matthew. Shout out to you, Matthew. And then um, that was that was pretty much it. We did our little graduation thing, the little ceremony. Everyone's parents showed up. Uh, my mom was driving my me home, and I lost my voice. And my mom was like. I could barely, I was trying to tell a story to my mom, but I lost my voice. And as I was telling the story, I, uh, I fell asleep in the car uh, because I was so sleep deprived. And I slept for like 
15 hours, I think. Something like that. 15, 16 hours. That's how long I slept. And it was one of the best sleeps of my life. Um, damn, this is... I have no pictures. This sucks. I remember I took Snapchats of like us sneaking around and stuff and all that. I remember I took snaps. I'm gonna... I'm just gonna have to wait for Nick and R to send it in. But, yeah... I'll I'll make a I'll make a playlist for this, um, so that way, or uh, yeah, I'll leave I'll leave the link to the playlist in the description. Let me let me make a note of that. 